for CSEC, you are required to learn the programming language Pascal. Now, in order to use it, you will need to use what is called a compiler. A uh, compiler is basically a program that will convert your instructions into machine language so that your computer can read it and execute the instructions. So the compiler we're going to use is called Easy Pascal, the free version. So you can just go in Google, type Easy Pascal, you can click the first link you see, and then you just click download. Then when it comes up, you will save it wherever you want to save it on your system. Then you hit save and you will locate the file, run as administrator and you will install it. Alright? I already installed it, so I won't go through that. Now this is how it will look when you open it. So you have program, this is where you can view the instruction that you are going to type. You have the program slash output at the bottom here in the blue. That's where you type the instructions and in the green at the top, that is where you will see the output for the program or the results of the program. And you can also see the text output by itself. So some person like to use see the program and the output. Some like to see the program alone. So it's up to you which one you like. Then there's a compile button right here. When it compiles, what it basically does is that it checks for syntax errors. Now syntax errors occur when you break the rules of the programming language. So this would search for common syntax errors and it will identify them so you will have to go and correct them yourself. It doesn't do the correcting for you. It only identifies errors, it doesn't do the correcting. Then you have your run button, run or pause, and then you have stop, but you can't say stop here because I didn't start anything obviously. Alright, so let's begin. So let me hit program. Now let's talk about the structure of the Pascal language. Now all Pascal must have a program heading. The first word program is compulsory. Example program, that's the compulsory word, sample, and then I put a semicolon. That you must have a program header at the beginning. Then next what I'm going to put is what is called a comment. Comments are inserted into Pascal programs by enclosing the comment with curly braces. Comments are ignored by the computer but are helpful to explain how the program works to other programmers. So whatever I put in curly braces, the computer is not going to try and read them. It is just for readability, just for persons who are reading the code to understand what is happening. Now you would be required to put your name, the purpose and the date when you are doing your SBA. So the name Eversley Francis the purpose to teach Pascal programming and the date this date is the tenth of March twenty eighteen. Alright? Next, you have your declarations. Now your declarations are very very important. Now, when when you are doing pseudo code, you would you would have met the term variable and constant. Variables they are basically containers. They act as containers that can hold value for us. Now remember that the values that are stored in variables they can change when processing. Whereas a constant the value can never change. Now, before you can use a variable, you must declare it. You must tell the compiler upfront, okay, these are my variables, and you must specify the data type before you can use it. Now, some persons will recommend that you put it first, some persons will recommend that you do the code and then declare the variables after. It's really up to you. But I would I would say let's do it first and then if later on you come up with some more variables then don't forget to go back and insert them 
So let's go through how you declare a variable. So I'm going, I'm going to use this code to find the sum of three numbers. Okay. So you must have the keyword var when you're declaring a variable. And then you say the name of the variable. I'm going to name this one num1. Then it's followed by a colon and then the data type. Now you have int for the data type. You have integer, real, char, which char for character, string, and boolean. So I'm going to add integer value, so I'm going to put integer. Then a semicolon. Then I'm going to go again, num2, integer, same data type, num3, integer. So I have the, I have the keyword var, short for variable. Then I have the name of the variable, followed by a colon, then the data type, then a semicolon. Now this this is one way we can use to declare three variables. Now since all of them they have the same data type, all of them are integers, then I can declare them using one line. And this is how it's done. You simply separate them with a comma. Like that. So all all three of them they have the same data type integer. Then I'm going to declare a constant, the keyword. That's the keyword for declaring a constant. Now this is not really a, necess a necessity for my program, but I'm just going to do it so you could have an idea of how to declare a constant. Okay? Then I'm going to declare a constant name speed of song. This is a long variable name. Equal the speed of sound is 343 meters per second, so let's put 343. Alright? Then after your variable declarations, this section, all these will are called my variable declaration. Then I would begin typing my instructions. Alright? So the statement would follow. Now you, the first thing you need to put is begin. Begin denotes the start of one or more programming statements. So we begin. When you're doing pseudocode, you have start. When you're doing programming, you have begin. Now if you have a begin, then you must have an end. And you put end with a full stop. Okay. Now for the statements. The statement will go between the begin and end. Now, of course, there are different types of statements, and we're going to go through them quickly. You have your input statement. So you you normally use read and read line, and they are used to read data from the keyboard and waits for the enter key on the keyboard to be pressed. Now, for read, the cursor stays next to the text entered. For read line, the cursor moves to the next line after the text is entered. So you will, see, you will see what I'm talking about later on. And you also have an output statement that will show the output to the monitor. It will output text to the monitor. Now you have right and right line. I like to use right line. Right ln, then you open brackets. Then I'm going to say enter three numbers. Now you must have curly braces, and at the end you must have a semicolon to end the command or to end the statement. And you must use single quotes. In pseudocode, you normally write double quotes like that. But in Pascal, you write single, and you must have your parentheses or your brackets. Now, this is what is going to be displayed on the screen on a new line. If I don't put Ellen, 
then it would be on the same line. But normally I like to write it on a new line because I find it looks more organized to have everything on a new line. So I put right line. Now whenever you ask for something, as I always say, whenever you ask for something you must accept it. Now read statements they are used to accept data that the user enters. These are input statements. So we have read and read line. As I said before, read would make the cursor stay next to the text that you enter and read line will make it go on a new line. As I said, and I'm going to let you read line, but you can stick with read if you like it that way. So read line, open bracket, then I put the name of the variable that I want to put the values in. So that would be num1, comma, num2, comma, num3. Close bracket and I put a semicolon to end the command. Okay. Now, what is going to happen is going to say on the screen, enter three numbers. Then it is going to wait for me to enter three numbers. The first number I enter is going to go in the variable name num1. The second one will go into the variable name num2 etc and same for num3 good then I'm going to say what I want to do with these variables so we're gonna use what we call assignment statements when you're doing pseudocode when you are doing pseudocode for assignment you normally use the arrow which means that you're taking the value from the right and putting it inside of the variable that comes on the left now the assignment operator is the colon and equal symbol that is what we use as the assignment operator the variable is on the left of the assignment operator the value is on the right of the assignment operator the semicolon ends the statement so let me give you an example so we're going to sum is assigned num1 plus num2 plus num3 and then I put a semicolon to end the command now you notice I created the variable here sum and I did not declare it so I, I'm going to leave it and compile it at the end so you can see the error you will get when you try to use a variable that was not declared so I'm going to leave it like this and then fix it afterwards so what this statement is saying we take the value from num1, add it to num2, and then add it to num3, and then the result we got from this side, we take all of it and we put it in the variable name sum. Okay? That is how you find the sum. Then we're going to write the result because if I if I want to find the sum of three numbers, if I if I enter the numbers, then at the end I expect to get some sort of result. I need to know what the sum is. So I'm going to display to the screen, right line. The sum is. Then I put a comma and the name of the variable sum. And then I put a semicolon. Now remember what is in what is shown in single quotes, what is shown between single quotes, that would be printed on the screen. And when it gets to sum, and this side is separated with a comma, the word sum will not be displayed on the screen. Remember, sum is a variable here. So what will actually be displayed is the value that is stored inside the variable sum. And you will see the results when I run the program. Alright? So this is an assignment. This is another output statement where we display our results. Now, there's something I need to show you. We need to talk about compound statements. Now, for this, I'm going to use for loops. We have for loops in Pascal as well, just as we had it in pseudocode. So, I'm going to write a for loop to display my name five times. So, this is how it's done for the variable i. 
is assigned one to five do then I go down right line my name is Eversley Francis and the command okay now this is only one statement so it's okay to write this so my name is Eversley Francis will be printed five times on the screen now if I want to put my name is Eversley Francis and I want to add another instruction right to the screen I am 21 years old if I want the both of them to be repeated then I this is what we would call a compound statement so when you have compound statements you need to put begin and you need to put end again now I want to pay attention to the way I put end here and the way I put end here you will notice that when I put end here it's with a I placed a semicolon there. Now this is saying that I am ending a compound statement. It started here and ended here. Let me indent it. However, the end at the bottom of the page means that I'm ending the entire program. Okay? So know the difference. When you whenever you want to place multiple statements in a control structure. You must put begin and you must put end, but you must put end with a semicolon at the end. Alright? It will be the same if I'm doing while loops, if I'm doing if statements. That's what that's what that's how it's done. That is how it is done. Otherwise you will, you, you will run into problems. Okay? So I'm going to execute this code. Now I'm going to declare this variable i as an integer as well. I'm going to put i. And remember I said I left some undeclared so you can see the error that I got. So I'm going to compile. Good. Now you notice what this says at the bottom here. Unknown identifier. Variables are also called identifiers. Right? So it is basically telling me that it does not recognize this identifier or this variable because I did not declare it up front. So how do I fix this? Now the, luckily for you, you notice when I click compile, the name of the unknown variable was highlighted for us. So all we need to do, we need to rectify this. So I'm simply going to go in my variable declaration section and add the variable sum. So it is now declared. So when I hit compile, then it says compile successful, meaning that there are no syntax errors so now I'm going to run the program so you could see the result click run then it comes up on the screen enter three numbers so let's enter 5 10 and 15 enter good so there you see you got the sum is 30 that's correct because 5 plus 10 is 15 15 plus 15 is 30. So this is correct. Then it printed to the screen five times. My name is Elvedi Francis. I am 21 years old. It repeated this step five times. So my program is working as expected. So this is the loop. My name is Elvedi Francis. One to five. So it will be printed five times. And this is where the calculation takes place for the sum. And that's it.